I look at my NFTs just because I, I look at them. I think they're cool. I buy ones that I like and um, and I'm socking them away. You know, imagine having bought some comic books, you know, the first five years, Helen, comic book lingo, the first 25 years, you know, that they came out. Those are all um, valuable now if they're in decent condition. Think about NFTs is they never go to bad condition. They're always mint. This is an intro. Intro, intro, intro. Hustle and float shark with your boy, my boy, Matt Wolf, and Joe Fair. Hey. Welcome back to the oh. Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Are you? I'm always happy to be Stoked. here. Dope. You know why? Because this is going to be fun, and it always is. It always happens to be fun because yeah. we say it's going to be fun. Yes. And dang it, this episode is going to be really fun because we're joined by another fun guy. Yeah. This guy's a an he's adult been twelve the year old. Yeah. He, 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 yes. That's that's what his bio says at least. I think I believe it. And after this episode, I definitely believe it. Yeah. So, um, well, really quick, what are what are we talking about? Just give me the quick hits. What are we going to get out of this? And I'll tell everyone who this individual is. So, on today's episode, you are going to learn about some internet marketing history, going all the way back to the early days of internet marketing. You're going to hear about um, internet marketing reality shows from 14 years ago. And we uh, grew up watching these. We huh? grew up watching these. Um, <laughs> and, and then we're pretty good, quickly going to shift the conversation into NFTs, cryptocurrencies, uh, DeFi, mm. all the various like blockchain technology stuff that seems to be pretty prolific and hyped up right now. And we've got somebody who is, uh, well, I, I couldn't imagine a better person to talk about this one. with right now. Yeah. So Joel Com. Joel Com's on the on the podcast, on the show, wherever you're watching this thing. He's joining us. And Joel's been around the block. So his first internet company was in 95. And that thing sold to, uh, or at least the one in 97 that I made, sold to uh, Yahoo. I'm not reading his bio yet, but it's pretty damn impressive. Mm -hmm. So Joel Com is a New York Times bestselling author, blockchain enthusiast, professional keynote speaker, social media marketing strat strategist, Live video expert, technologist, brand influencer, futurist, and eternal 12-year-old. 12-year-old. That's right. Joel's a sought-after public speaker and leaves his audiences inspired, entertained, and armed with strategic tools to create highly effective new media campaigns, as someone was trying to call me. There you go. <laughs> so, I mean, that worked. It read the bio off the phone. and Look at that. I'm so professional when my yeah. computer dies. So. so here's what you're going to get out of this episode. Again? Yes. Well, More? I said what we're going to talk about. I didn't say what, you, what you're yeah. specifically going to learn, right? Uh, after listening to this episode, you should have an idea of how to get involved in NFTs. You should have an idea of some altcoins that you can look into and how to get started from a, like a very beginning mm -hmm. phase. If you're a company that's pivoted a whole bunch of times over the years, we're going to to ease your mind on that topic it's because okay. we've pivoted a lot and so has Joel and we're going to talk about a good way to think about that and approach all of these pivots. And also we're going to learn how to have fun with our work. If you feel like you're not having fun, he's going to break down his fun formula for work and life. And we might succeed. talk about farting a little bit too. A little bit of farting snuck out in uh, this episode. So of, let's be honest, you little fart probably snuck out as you're watching or listening to. So yeah, at but least you don't way. have to be in the room with Joe when it happened. <laughs> well, it's just through my phone. Yeah. It's anyway, we did All take right. notes on this episode Always. for you. If you go to hustleandflowchart.com slash notes, you can get access to the notes. That's hustleandflowchart.com slash notes. Full action guide, full flow notes. Flow notes for flow everyone. Notes so hustleandflowchart.com slash notes. And then let's go talk to Joel. And go. We are recording now <laughs> this dramatic countdown from Riverside. Joel, thank you for for joining us this morning. Uh, it is my pleasure, fellas. It is uh, not morning here though in Puerto Rico. It is afternoon. Oh, that is uh, correct. You're not in. Used to be in Denver, I believe. Colorado. I, that's correct. I was in Denver. I've been uh, been here on the island since April oh. and uh, love it. Yeah. No, I heard that you were on a JLD show recently, and I heard yeah your your neighbors or you're pretty close to him. It seems like he's yeah. Like, we're just, I was just at his pool earlier this week. We, there you we go. hang out. Yes. How, how's the internet like infrastructure down there? I know I had some friends that moved down there probably ten years ago, and ten years ago they said that they couldn't get good internet, so they ended up moving back. Oh yeah, no. I mean, I've got um, they're laying fiber soon, but right now my uh, my internet's five hundred down. Oh, oh so, wow! Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good. So they solved that problem. Yeah, it seems like they solved that yeah. problem, <laughs> <laughs> as they should, because money's flowing down there. Right. Yeah, man. Well, uh, I know we we've been we've been following you for years and years and years. We have a lot of mutual friends, and um, I think I don't know TNCs back years ago. We we probably crossed paths. I know we did through Sean Vossler and whatnot. But big shout out to uh, George Bryant to make this happen and step. Yeah, George is great. Too. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think I think actually the very first introduction that I had to to Joel Com was I believe you did like an internet game show or something. It's got to be what 11, 12 years ago or something. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> Next Internet Millionaire was 2007. 2000. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And, and 14 I think... years. 14 years ago. Now I feel old. That's crazy. Thanks, yeah. Matt. <laughs> Man, thanks. Out that hey, way. I was watching it back then. So what does that say about us? So <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's funny. I still um, it, of several times a year, somebody will bring that up and it just boggles my <laughs> mind. That's something we created, you know, that was really something just for that time it wasn't intended to live on because it was a reality show based on this is what internet marketing is here in 2017 um in 14 years later somebody's still bringing it up that's just <laughs> wow what what an honor yeah man. well you were taking on i think what weren't, weren't you it was everything was online you had the production it was like top-notch production i think it was kind of modeling apprentice back in the day yeah it was i was very much inspired by the apprentice and by the rise of youtube and i went to uh, my jv partner eric homeland uh, eric's another he's a great guy and we had done several successful products together the instant adsense templates huh. and a couple other things um, did really well and um, we were like what's next i remember him saying he wanted to get into video and i had been doing videos on youtube since uh, 2006 i want to say is when i did my first one and after having watched a season of the apprentice i think i was in the shower that's when the best ideas come from right yep. <laughs> the shower or sitting on the toilet i don't know something about being in the bathroom yeah, that's right and uh and i thought oh what if we did a reality show but it was really professionally done and then uh, i reached out to uh, armin morin and perry marshall and ray edwards and all of these you know they were already legends of internet marketing mm -hmm. and it's interesting because all but one of them uh, is still relevant in that space today. So I chose wisely. Um, <laughs> and they came out to Colorado and we auditioned, you know, a couple hundred people for the show and picked 12, you know, 12, six men, six women from different countries and put them through the task. And uh, still, we got, ended up getting an honorary Webby Award for it. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. But I look at um, Joel from 2007 and I'm like, who is that guy? <laughs> in the, the suit and tie? What? No, <laughs> cut that out. That's got to end. <laughs> yeah. Is that the only thing that's different now? I know you're wearing a laughter or something shirt. You know, something's written on there. Um, well, the I, I had a goatee that's and right. <laughs> uh, glasses that weren't quite right for my face. Um, I think I was taking myself too seriously. I was also married. Um, <laughs> so lots, lots has changed since then uh but uh you know no no regrets it was sure. uh it was a great ride well you uh, i mean you have a huge history in terms of like i want to get into like the fun you, you what you were like 15 books maybe you have more out by the time yeah. uh no, that, 15 15 is the number still okay that's, that's holding yeah. true <laughs> so but i think the thing and by that, the way no plans to write any more oh yeah no plans i've actually i've been you know pitched on and i had an agent want to you know um for me to do another book and it's just it takes so long for a book to be published even if you crash it to market yeah. um and things change especially now in the blockchain and crypto world that by the time you know your book comes out it's already incredibly dated yeah i find that there's other ways to get your information out there and i've already got the new york times bestseller title i did it once back in 2006 and so once you're a new york times bestseller you're always new york times bestseller <laughs> so yeah. what am i going for i mean what's what's the point for yeah sure. yeah it makes sense i mean I, I saw right when clubhouse just started to to get more popular four or five people all put out like books on clubhouse like immediately i'm like come on let it breathe a little bit let's see if this thing even pans out right <laughs> And, yeah. yeah. Well, you did the Twitter book. I remember that. So I think you were three editions. That's right. And the first and there will on. not be a fourth because <laughs> Twitter is uh, part of the problem now. Mm, yeah, it's interesting, man. It's a whole different. I mean, there's a lot of NFT talk on there. I'm sure you're still perusing on Twitter, which is really the only reason that I use Twitter now. In fact, I um, uh, earlier this year, I wiped out my entire Twitter history. Yeah. I was like, you know what? There's no reason for them to have all this. This stuff is temporal mm -hmm. and I'll probably wipe it out again. It's like it'll, it's there and then it'll be gone. And it, I don't need a whole history, but I've been on Twitter since 2008, I want to say. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah, Long yeah. Time. So, oh, well, I was going to ask why, why, um, 
it, it seems like you've, you've pivoted a bit out of social media, out of internet marketing, out of talking about a lot of that kind of stuff and moved more into the crypto and NFT and DeFi and all that kind of stuff. Why, why the transition? Why did, why did you kind of kill a lot of the social media? Why did you stop talking about internet marketing as much? Yeah. Well, my whole career has been pivot. Um, you know, I'm, a, I'm what uh, we call a functional futurist. I like to say, I don't just see the future. I get there first, uh, which is a fancy and smart way of saying the reality. The reality is I like to play with the cool toys. And so I play with the toys and every now and then I figure out something that's fun and that works. And so I play with it some more and then people start going, how'd you do that? And then I teach them. Right. So, um, you know, I got into I built my first website in 1995. We had one of the first online shopping sites because where people saved money with coupons, dealofday.com. Not because I saw, oh, this is going to be a great way to make money, but because I liked saving money online. I call, you know, I would go and buy and use these coupons and get these great deals. So I started putting them into a site. Turns out I was right. And it was a huge hit. Um, I like playing games. And so I partnered with a, a game developer who had built one of the first multiplayer game sites that were on the web back in 1997. And we partnered up, called it classicgames.com, ended up selling it to Yahoo. And so, you know, I got into affiliate marketing, then I got into internet marketing, then I got into social media marketing early. And um, once I'm there and I do my thing for a while, I get bored with it. And that's right around the time that the masses start coming in. I'm like, you know, there's other people who are interested in teaching this now. Let them be the experts. Uh, what's interesting to me now? And so, you know, a little over four years ago, crypto got my attention. And once I understood it, I'm like, that's it. <laughs> I, I, I'm home for as long as I'm here. Um, and then NFTs got my attention. And so I play with pixels most of my day. It's, <laughs> it's hilarious. And I, you know, it's not that, um, I, I don't think that there's any true visionary aspect to it. It's just that the way I'm wired, I tend to pay attention to what's happening and, uh, in dabble. Yeah. What's that? Cause it's interesting. Cause it's very obvious that you pivot like crazy and you like to be the first adopter, or maybe even a pioneer. Cause I think what's well, pioneer early adopter and then yep. further to mass. Yep. What's the, like, what's your secret sauce to doing it big? Cause I feel like you do it big, like even with the NFT or maybe it's the bad crypto cryptocurrency podcast, you have some like 10 million downloads already on that. Yeah. And that's yeah. just chatting about a brand new thing. It hasn't hit mass adoption or anywhere near it. Yet. Right. Um, with the secret sauce, I really, so I, my last book that I wrote book number 15 was called the fun formula in which I attempted to disseminate and reverse engineer the secret sauce. And, and here's what I discovered that the hustle and grind is a load of BS, <laughs> right? Uh, in fact, I actually tweeted this morning, the hustle is a dance and the grind is for coffee beans. Um, like anybody that. selling you this mentality and this lifestyle of work, 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 work to get to the top, you're just going to burn out. Mm. You might get there, but you're going to make a lot of sacrifices that you don't want to make along the way. And so I looked at all the things that I tried and I realized that if I wasn't fully invested in something, like if I was doing it just to make money, the odds of it succeeding were very small, mm. very small. Um, and if I had to work, work, work my ass off to get there, also the odds of finding success and fulfillment, not only in the business, but in my life at that time was, it was at risk. It was when I was following my own curiosity and creativity, when I was um, willing to take a risk and when I was willing to trust the process hmm. that things worked out the best. And so as it turns out, the home runs that I've had in my career came from the least amount of effort <laughs> and not just once, not just twice, but again and again and again and again and again. And I call it the fun formula and that's the name of the book. Yep. And it's not a mathematical formula, but it's a, it's a philosophical approach to how you work and how you live. And I'm just really fortunate that I cracked the code for that in my life. Everybody's going to have their own fun formula. But I really encourage people to question conventional wisdom on education and entrepreneurship and doing business and seeing business as one thing in, in you know, your play, your, your, the rest of your life is another. Uh, we're holistic, integrated 
humans and um, it may look like I work a lot, <laughs> but I don't I work smart. Um, I, I, you know, it's, it's the right moves at the right time and they don't always succeed, but it's stopping failure when you're failing, mm. you know, it's, yeah. it's knowing when to, what was it? The gambler, no one to hold them, no one to fold them, right. no one to walk away, no one to run. It's like Kenny Rogers, I, right? Yeah. It, it, there's not a one size fits all, but I do think that the philosophy, um, that I live by can work for most people. I think that's fair, man, because you remove the friction, right? You're just your true self, and I know everything is fun for you. Like your podcast, yeah. everything you do, it, you hear the fun, the energy's out there, and I feel like that attracts a lot of momentum around you as well. Yeah, it's the hustle and flow. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I like that because there's no days. grind. It's not a grind chart, right? Yeah. Um, the hustle is is taking the action. The grind is the part that'll kill you. And that's not fun. You know, you talk about grinding in, in games like World of Warcraft, and that's like mindless, you know, just grinding away to level up to get to the real game. Nonsense. This is the real game right here, right now, today. This is all we've got. Mm. Past is done. Future isn't guaranteed. So, you know, if you're there's people that I see that work decades to get that retirement. I'm like, why, why would you waste the best years of your life on something that you don't know you're going to get to? Mm, yeah. yeah, I love it. We actually have this mantra that's actually written all around our office. You, you can't see it on video, but it's there's one on our mixing board that says this is going to be fun. There's actually one on my computer. There's one on yeah. Joe's computer. It's just a reminder to ourselves that we're here to have fun and the making right. money just kind of follows because people, you know, they... They get attracted to the personalities. They get attracted mm -hmm. to the fun. They watch us have fun and go, I want me some of that. And <laughs> that's what attracts people to us. Exactly. And that that's actually in the book. Uh, people want to be around others who are having a good time yeah, man. because they, so many are not having a good time. You know, they're having to get up at the crack of dawn and go to this J-O-B that they hate. And mm -hmm. they don't realize that there's a way out. They don't see a way out, but they're scared to take risks. They're scared to fail. I'm not scared to fail. I embrace failure. I have failed so many times. I have wasted so much money on efforts that went absolutely nowhere. But I knew going in that it can go nowhere. And the people who need the so-called security, they're not secure. They've just created a nice, comfy, comfy little prison for themselves. That's right. Mm. Oh man. Well, I know a big thing of like, so with your pivot, having fun is you launch something fast, you get it out and you get it out yep. to the world that has momentum. And I heard you tell the story. I think it was one of your keynotes about your fun formula. And you talked about iFart, you know, the app back <laughs> way back in the day and how it was like, it was just an idea. And then the thing was launched. It got a ton of downloads and I think mm -hmm. you sold it as well. Can you kind of uh, like, no, I still, I still, I have partners. We still okay. own it. Uh, but I yeah, know. that was, you know, I bought one of the first iPhones um, in 2007. They came out with it immediately. I went, ooh, new toy. <laughs> this thing is awesome. I have to have one. And I paid $599 for it, which was the original price. And just a couple weeks later, Steve Jobs lowered the price 200 bucks. And people were like, I paid six. And they rebated people 100 bucks. I didn't complain because I saw the value I paid five ninety nine for it. I'm good, mm. but I'll take your rebate too. So they rebated. <laughs> Thanks, Apple. Anyway, a year later uh, is when they made the announcement at uh, their their big announcement -y thing that they were going to open up the SDK for developers. And so I pulled the team into the conference room, and the first app we built was called I Vote. It allowed people to you know vote for popular opinions on stuff. It was one of the first thousand apps mm. in the App Store. Uh, but after we were done with that, <laughs> my team was largely composed of men and uh, we all started whiteboarding all these ideas. And we had, I, it's funny because I remember we had the idea for what somebody else developed that became Foursquare. Oh, wow. Uh, but instead yeah. we chose to develop a fart machine. <laughs> yeah, it's a little easier app. sounding too. <laughs> and uh, I remember when um, Somebody on the team mentioned it. I think it was Dan, my uh, my executive vice president of ideas, still the best hire I ever had, and still a good friend uh, who who helps me. Sweet title. Um, I, I uh, he had the, I think he had the idea, and I turned to my developer. I say, "How long would it take to develop it? Three weeks." Turn to my graphic designer. Can you get the graphics done? Three weeks. Yep. 
did it December of uh, 2008. It came out and uh, I used the, what marketing chops I had to tell a story. And uh, 12 days later, we were number one in the world. And uh, I still, it's hilarious to this day. It still sells. Mm. The fact that you're laughing when we brought it up, like still, and it's been this long. <laughs> it's oh, like, it cracks me amazing. up. I mean, if they put on my tombstone, he farted. Okay, great, whatever. <laughs> if that's what some people, it's funny because when you do a lot of different things, people remember you sure. for different things. Some people, it's the next internet millionaire. Some of them, it's Yahoo Games. Some of them, it's iFart. Some know me from crypto. Some know me from Twitter and social media. Some know me from you know being on stage at Tony's or, or Harvecker's or one of these. Some remember me all the way back to 1995 from my first website, worldvillage.com. And you know, it's it's funny uh, because I've played in so many different sandboxes. Uh, and I've met so many amazing people across all these different industries. I feel uh, I feel hyper connected, you know, to so many different people, and I feel incredibly blessed. Like, yeah. what a life mm. to be able to just play and try things and do what you want, and 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 people actually care, right? They actually want to listen what you have to say, and and then you find out that you actually impacted somebody's life. I gotta. Sure. I got an email from uh, a guy um, a couple of weeks ago because the, he listened to our show. He got he bought some NFTs and made something like four million dollars. Oh, wow! Wow! <laughs> like <laughs> I haven't made that in NFTs. <laughs> Maybe I should listen to my show. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, what you've minted what over a million NFTs? Though, we right? have minted over a million NFTs. Yeah, that's for crazy. Our own original properties, and and we're getting ready to do more here. Got several properties and series ready to not ready that will come out over the next four to six months. Mm, that's, yeah, I, I think this is a good spot to kind of shift into talking about NFTs and crypto. Heck yeah. Um, you know, I I have a very little bit of experience in NFT. I own one NFT. I purchased it because I heard that um, that Jake Paul was going to get behind it, right? That's mm. a, always a good reason to invest in something <laughs> is Jake Paul's name's attached. Um, so I bought this NFT thinking, okay, this is going to get pumped up. Well, I bought it for, I minted one and and then I minted it. The price was 0.06 ETH. And then what I didn't realize when I was getting into NFTs and using ETH to purchase NFTs is this thing called gas fees. Mm -hmm. Well, the gas fees were another like half the price again of the NFT. So I ended up paying another hundred dollars plus US dollars for just the gas fees. So now I'm yep. in it for like 0.08 ETH. And the floor price price that it's selling for everywhere is 0.06. So I just instantly lost money on my NFT after my first purchase. And so far, that's my experience with NFTs. <laughs> well, you haven't lost money yet because you haven't sold no, it. No, I haven't right? sold it yet. True, true. Point. And when did you buy it? Um, a month ago. Oh, God. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is, but this is the mentality that we now are, you know, living in uh, is that people expect a quick flip mm -hmm. on whatever they're buying. And if they can't, flip their NFT the next day for a profit, then they start complaining. I watch these, these, these they're like children on these discords uh -huh. complaining to the developers when they don't sell out in, you know, two hours. Yep. I'm like, you people have no concept. You know, people go to work every day for 30 <laughs> years in a job. Hmm just to pay the bills and you whiny little brats are over here complaining because your cute panda you know doesn't sell for an extra 200 bucks get a grip on reality people please yeah i think i think I, I know my expectations were set by youtubers and all of the pumpers on twitter mm -hmm. so you know but i am i am still holding on to it haven't lost money yet ideally it'll what, go what up. is it uh it was called a sacred devil Oh yeah, I know. The, I, I think I have. Uh, I might have a sacred devil or two. I buy so many NFTs. <laughs> I and I don't. My sacred devils. I do not like the way they look. I was like, really? I got these crappy ones. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, some you know. So you, they show you all the best ones on the website, right? And then you get one, and it's like, man, it's kind of ugly. I think I'll sell that even at a loss. Just yeah. I don't want it. <laughs> but you gotta give. You gotta give these NFT these communities time to develop. They have roadmaps, right? Mm -hmm. They're building games with these they're 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 turning things into physical pieces of art and other redeemables they're uh, you know attaching experiences to yeah. them so i don't i look at my nfts just because i i look at them i think they're cool i buy ones that i like 
and um, and I'm socking them away. Yeah, you know, imagine having bought some comic books. You know, the first five years, mm-hmm. hell, in comic book lingo, the first twenty five years. Yeah. you know that they came out. Those are all. I'm mean, valuable now if they're in decent condition. Thing about NFTs is they never go to bad condition. They're always mint. Yeah. Um, you know, people that are short sighted right now and trying to flip, they're missing out. It's kind of like having bought Bitcoin, uh-huh. you know, at 10 cents and it's going, it's going to a dollar and you sell it at a dollar. Oh, right. It's $44,000 today, gang. So how did that one dollar, you know, work out for you? Uh, yeah. uh, you got you got to look at things that you're investing in for money with a more long term um, point of view. In my humble opinion, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Go do your own research, kids, and be responsible with your own money. Dang right, man. So if you're if you're talking about NFTs to someone fresh, which I'm assuming a lot of the folks in our audience haven't deep dove, you know, obviously not to your level, I would imagine, maybe one percent. But how would you describe NFTs and and some of the applications that are maybe on the horizon with NFTs as well? Why we should uh, well, first of all, I think it's important to understand what an NFT is. Uh, NFT stands for non-fungible token. Now, knowing that might not provide any better explanation <laughs> of what it is. Uh, a lot of people don't even know, you know what the word fungible is, and it, it's no one's fault if they haven't been taught. I didn't learn either until I got into tokens. But something that's fungible, they're all the same. So, you know, if I said to you guys, um, hey, uh, I need a dollar bill, and you opened your wallets, and you got all these dollar bills in there, you wouldn't go, oh, which one? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> you just hand me any dollar, and I would be satisfied that I got my dollar from right. you, right? Because they're all treated the same. They're not different, right? But if I were to say to you, hey, uh, I want to I want to buy a house, then you would go, oh, which one? Why? Because they're all different they're all unique no two are the same the 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 address itself is a different address or the apartment number is its own apartment those are non-fungible they're different so a non-fungible token same thing with a bitcoin by the way a bitcoin is fungible Mm -hmm. if i say send me a bitcoin you say a bitcoin's a bitcoin they're not like divided up into 21 million of them Mm -hmm. bitcoin's a bitcoin but an nft something that's non-fungible each one is unique even if you have some that look the same they all have a unique identifier and a mint number attached to them so there might be 20 of a picture you know of joe Mm -hmm. same nft same picture but their mint numbers one two three four five all the way up through 20 each one is unique so the it's really it's on blockchain and the beautiful things about it are numerous first of all who collected cards either one of you guys collect baseball cards Mm -hmm, definitely right of course yep what goes wrong with baseball cards that brings down the value uh corners you know something getting bent lost all that stuff yeah Yeah. the players not having good careers Uh, (laughs) that too fire damage water damage they have to grade these things to determine how much they're worth right on a scale of one to ten then they put them in this little you know, uh, acrylic Mm -hmm. thing to package them and sell them. NFTs, they're on blockchain. They never degrade. The only way they get lost is if you lose the keys to your wallet. Other than that, unless, you know, you get hacked because of your own lack of attention to securing your stuff, they don't get lost. They don't degrade over time. Your mom can't throw out two bags of your baseball cards while you're at school one day. Yes, that really happened. And yes, I forgive my mom. Uh, but it makes for, it's a great example, yeah, right? Is. So unless you lose your wallet, you can't lose it. But unlike your baseball cards of old, today's baseball cards that Tops are putting out um, have video on them. They have animation. They have sound. There, there's. It's not just static. And so you can think of an NFT as programmable media it's this package a box if you will think of it as a virtual box that you can put anything into it can be a still image it can be an animated image it could be a video it could have audio with it it can be 3d rendered Um, it can be attached to an experience it can be attached to a physical good Um, it could evolve over time All of these things are just the beginning of what's being pioneered in the NFT world. And in the not too distant future, we are going to see NFTs incorporated into all of the popular games Mm -hmm. so that the sword that you own in World of Warcraft, you actually own that sword. That NFT is representative of that item that only you have. And you can sell that 
And another game publisher, you know, maybe in Guild Wars or something, will say, oh, swords here are cross game. You could uh, use yeah. that same sword, that same cloak, that same wand, that same power, ability, pet. All of these things are going to become NFTs. And uh, that's just the gaming and the art side of it. The, the mainstream, once NFTs truly permeate, the day is going to come where your driver's license is an NFT. Mm -hmm. Your insurance policy is an NFT. You own it. It's in your wallet. You, it's the ultimate certificate of authenticity that we can use to authenticate any piece of information, data, good service, you name it. And that's why this technology is amazing. It's going to be ubiquitous and it's here to stay. And I will take a breath now. <laughs> take a breath because, yeah, that, like the art is one thing. And I think that's where it's it's early days. You know, people are kind of practicing with the tech and all that stuff. But it's like the utilities and how it's it's going to everyone's going to own an NFT. I think I heard you say that before. And it's like, oh, yeah, of course. And well, it's, it's like there's like a mental rant, ramp up, right? Like the the. The art thing is easy to grasp, I feel like. I, I feel like that's the easiest way to explain how NFTs work. So it's like the art stuff kind of came before it to get people ready for what NFTs are capable of. And this is the the entry point in the consumer's mind of like, here's the best way to explain NFTs. Now let's get crazy with them. Yeah, I think, yeah, we're, we're definitely at the beginning. We're seeing the... Um, we're seeing the first inundation happen because right now we're still in the early adopter phase mm -hmm. of NFTs. I feel like January 1st of 2021, we turned the corner from pioneering to early adopter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that early adopter part of the tech curve, that takes a few years before you get to the very beginning of the mass adoption part yeah. of the curve. And that takes a whole bunch of years to bring the masses on. <clears throat> now technology accelerates faster than it used to. And if you look at how long it took for um, smartphones mm -hmm. to permeate, to go from, you know, pioneering. When we bought our first one in 2007, we were pioneering. When you got one in 2009 to 2012, you were early adopting. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of pulling years out of my, <laughs> yeah, my yeah. ear here, but that's kind of like, and then when you bought one in 2013, 14, you were at the beginning of the mass adoption, right? Yeah. So technology is moving quicker. The adoption curve is happening faster, but we're still in the early adopter phase and there's not a big enough market to sustain all of the people that want to create now because they see an opportunity to make money. And so we're now seeing an inundation of projects, some of them really not worth creating, um, some of them awesome, but only a small handful are selling out, mm. uh, you know, at least immediately. And so you're going to hear people say, well, NFTs are over. It's uh, done. Uh, and of course, it's not. Yeah. It's just you got in at a time where a bunch of other people got in and you're all trying to sell to the same audience, which is each other. Yeah. Um, but as the mainstream comes in, the, the audience will be there and the audience will be massive. Yeah. Mm. Do you think that NFTs are... Um are a, a game for people with with money right now or do you think there's a place for people that just have you know little bits of extra money to play around with right now do you think they should be looking at it too or you know if you've got money to play with right now it's kind of for those people well i mean look it's clearly an nft is not anything that's gonna you know your life's going to depend on, mm -hmm. right? If you're buying an NFT and your life does depend on it, perhaps there's other things you should be doing with your money. <laughs> right. uh, I, I am not a financial advisor. So I, here's what I tell people when it comes to crypto or NFTs. Um, it's very risky. All of it's very risky, high risk. If you're risk averse, then it might not be for you because the ups and downs of the crypto and NFT world are not for weak stomachs. Mm -hmm. Um, if you are prone to be emotionally, uh, you know, on the roller coaster, when things take a deep plunge, then you might not want the heartburn that goes with it. So what I tell people is if you want to invest in either crypto or NFTs, what amount of money from your stash would you be comfortable putting on the table in front of you and setting on fire? <laughs> Don't do any more than that. If that amount of money will not impact you know, putting food on your table, clothing on your back, shelter over your heads, you know, your your children having what they need and your well-being, right? Yeah. Then go ahead and play. Educate yourself. 
don't fall prey for the hype though. You see it on Twitter, you see it on the Discord, you see it on YouTube. Is this next thing going to the moon? Mm. Is that like those people, they have no right unless they are financial advisors and most of them are not yeah. to be telling mm. you. They're just, they're being sensationalists. They're trying to get eyeballs um, or listeners or readers and they're doing more harm than good by uh, by telling people to invest in things. Figure it out, though. Take your time. It's not like hurry up and get in now or you're going to miss the train. We are still early. There is so much time. Be wise with your money. Educate yourselves because there are people out there that want your money and don't care about you. Oh, yeah. 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 A lot, a lot of that. Hype, I don't think a lot of people realize it, but a lot of the hype that you see around a lot of these NFTs are so, it, it's sort of engineered behind the scenes in Discord. You know, if you get into some of oh, these yeah. Discord groups before these N NFTs launch, you could see these people all collaborating, mm -hmm. saying, this person just asked a question about NFTs. Everybody pounce on them. Everybody, like, spam right. them with 100 messages about our NFT. So, like, these right. Discord groups are actually engineering these pumps that you're seeing. So when you see these big pumps on Twitter and Reddit and places like that, I think it's a, it's good to be start skeptical. Mm. <laughs> Always. You're talking about money where there's money. Money, there's greed there's people with nefarious motives as well and there's but there's also a lot of legitimacy hmm. there are people out there that are creating some really cool projects that are very innovative um, some of them are making powerful change and doing good stuff with the their profits for the community or for charitable causes mm -hmm. and so this is why it's important that you have critical thinking and go engage and learn about the stuff ask questions don't FOMO into stuff. FOMOing <laughs> in um, rarely ends well. Every now and then it does, but it's kind of like going to Vegas and picking black or red. That's right. You know, you, the house wins. Mm -hmm. you know? Always. Yeah, Newsflash. Yeah. The house wins. <laughs> That's why they're so, uh, so just be careful. So what's, uh, you know, with all the different projects and price points, you alluded to it earlier with Ethereum. Uh, what are what are some of these blockchains? I know, like, when you're minting yours i think you said you use um what is it uh wax wax is, yeah. yeah is that your go-to for all of your your nft um it, it has been we are definitely you know looking at going cross chain and multi-chain on some of our projects because the consumer base is in these different areas but you know while the world has been accustomed to using ethereum um really because ethereum was the first mover because it was the first smart contract blockchain um, in the first to have NFTs on it. NFTs are a horrible use case of Ethereum mm -hmm. because of these gas fees. It's uh, Ethereum is fantastic for smart contracts, but it's absolutely horrible for uh, for for NFTs. And so uh, Wax comes along, and it is a an EOS fork, uh, which is a different blockchain. Mm -hmm. And the it's a proof of stake chain. Mm -hmm. And so rather than proof of work, it doesn't require gas. Um, it requires a little bit of RAM to mint your NFTs, mm -hmm. but it's negligible, you know, especially for the bulk of NFTs that we do. And there's no gas fee on the buyer side at all. None. Wow. And not only that, but unlike Ethereum that can get backed up and clogged and instead of, you know, five minutes for a transaction, it could take 20 or your transaction might not go through at all and, and you've ended up wasting your gas fee. Wax are instant. I can, if you go and buy one of my NFTs off a of Wax marketplace right now, in just a few seconds, I mean, it, it settles, boom, it's done. The wax is in my wallet, the NFT is in yours. Mm. And so um, it's a much better solution for NFTs. And, uh, and it's being discovered. I mean, there's actually more daily users um, on wax than there are on Ethereum wow. for NFTs. Well, and that was but people don't know about it. And there's more stuff launching and there's a lot more money on Ethereum too, right? Yeah. Because you've got all these people that got into Ethereum early and so the prices of these NFTs are automatically higher. Uh, Wax is probably the best kept secret in, in the NFT world. Uh, yeah. And I was, I was hearing you talk about this. I think it was on your bad, bad cryptocurrency podcast. And, and just the difference, I was like, oh, it makes sense because the NFTs, like what you were saying, you what, it was like 200 something bucks, mm. but your fees were just like so high where it was just negligible and, you know, just kind of even or loss mm -hmm. in that case, kind of. Mm -hmm. But then on your side with the wax, you have tops on there. You have all these big companies, I think, uh, mm -hmm. what, Hot Shots, uh, the NBA NFTs. 
Top uh, shot. NBA is not on, uh, not, not on, on wax. Oh, uh, okay. Top shot is on uh, flow, which is Dapper uh, labs is. Uh, so that is different. what we call a, a layer two, an L2 side chain of Ethereum. And so they basically took the Ethereum code, forked it and made it. So it works without the gas fees, ah. right? There's a bunch of those that are taking place. Flow is one phantasma is, is another. There's a whole list of them actually that are, um, that are surfacing, uh, but Wax is built on its own chain. They were in Ethereum initially, and then they moved their coin over to this EOS fork, which is basically a way of saying a duplicate of the code um, that the EOS chain uses. And it just, it works and yeah. it works great. And there's been more innovation too, I think on Wax. For example, the reason we started minting our blockchain heroes cards there is because uh, these guys had developed a system where you could buy a pack of cards that you would then open and out of that pack of cards you would get these nfts hmm. um there's only that's only been done a few times on ethereum and it's too costly yep. you can't spend um you know a hundred dollars in gas when you're buying a ten dollar pack of cards mm -hmm. doesn't right. make any sense and that's what i was thinking i was like okay when it gets more mass adoption i would imagine some of these types of projects would take off with less fees you know something like wax yeah. and you know now i know obviously not financial advice again but i was checking out the price i'm like it's like 20 ish cents well you know, it's yeah it's down from its high um and the reason that it's even where it is it, it was languishing between eight and in 15 cents for a long time. And they finally got listed on Binance and a couple other exchanges, making it, yeah. there's more liquidity to go around uh, for all of this. And so uh, Wax is, is the one to watch, um, but they're not the only ones. Mm -hmm. You know, Cardano is getting into NFTs. Solana um, is, I feel, come on extremely strong. And I think is the next big winner in the NFT space because mm -hmm. the gas fees there are, are, are negligible. It is a side chain, yeah. uh, its own chain, and um, it doesn't cost nearly as much to mint or to buy NFTs on that one either. The The NFT wars are just beginning. It's so <laughs> early. Yeah. Well, isn't isn't Ethereum isn't Ethereum 2.0 supposed to switch from proof of work to proof of stake or yes. get cheaper? <laughs> And when <laughs> nobody knows, I mean, they keep saying it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. When it finally arrives, um, then I think there will be much celebration and we'll remember. Remember when we used to spend, you know, $500 in gas on a $200 purchase? Uh -huh. <laughs> Remember those days, Matt? I do. <laughs> on my one purchase. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, well let, let, uh, did you have more on the NFT stuff? Because I want to talk about some altcoin stuff as well. I was well. curious, uh, Joel, if you have any projects or specific utilities with NFTs in the future up to come that you're just keeping your eye for, out for. For us? For you. Yeah. yeah. Just your curiosity, too. Yeah. Well, there's a couple. The one project that I'm uh, uh, on the team right now is called Dust. And if you go to dustminers.com, uh, Magic Dust. Crypto Dust is a is a cryptocurrency that uh, Kurt Braggett has created on Telegram. Hmm. So basically, um, there are certain groups on Telegram that become dust mines, and if you link your your Wax wallet on this Telegram and you just chat normally mm -hmm. in that Telegram, every time you chat, you're earning cryptocurrency mm -hmm. called Dust. Well, they are branching out to Ethereum and Polygon, which is Polygon is a side chain on Ethereum with low gas fees. And uh, they're going to be offering 11,111 dust miner characters. There are these pixel characters. Each one of them is a one of one. And by owning these, you'll be able in certain Discord channels to mine dust. Mm. So there's over a hundred dust mines on Telegram right now. And I'm sure that as people discover this, they're going to go to their discords there and say, Hey, can I, you know, can we connect this to the dust mine? Uh -huh. And so what happens when people start getting their hands on uh, crypto? Well, what happened to Dogecoin? It was a community coin. And uh, just today we covered in our news that AMC movie theaters is thinking about accepting Dogecoin <laughs> as payment for, for movie tickets. Wow. Um, so uh, this project is really interesting because it puts the power of mining in the hands of people that uh, that interact in these social channels and own these NFTs. Uh, and uh, we've been developing Blockchain Heroes, which is our flagship product on Wax since um, last a year ago summer. We've had three 
series of cards. Each one has sold out completely. Hmm. Uh, and we're releasing our next set in November. And in first Q of 2022, we are planning on releasing a mobile game um, hmm. based on the blockchain heroes. It's not going to be a card game, even though our NFTs are cards, yeah. but you'll need to own cards in order to unlock characters in the game. Yeah. So I'm not going to say what kind of game it is yet. Uh, but it's going to be a mobile game for both iOS and Android. And uh, we know that our, our people are going to be really excited that the characters that they've come to know and love through their collections are going to be able to utilize these oh, in this yeah. game. That's rad. That sounds really cool. cool. Yeah, we'll have to – I'd love to – what's the best way to get notified about that drop when it happens? Uh, well, all of our stuff, you know, we have a Discord. Everybody's free to join it. I'll give you a URL. It's a short link. Just go to badco, B-A-D-C-O dot I-N forward slash Discord. It spells bad coin, but it's badco dot I-N forward slash Discord. And the official site for Blockchain Heroes, which is due for a facelift, is bcheroes.com. And so people can learn more about the the collectibles that we've offered and uh, it's really, it's epic. Um, and it's been great because I get to, you know, I've built these with my co-host and friend, Travis Wright hmm. and, uh, and our sons, it's been a father, son, father, son project. Right. My son, Zach uh, is 29. He's our creative director and, and he is a master storyteller and writer and all of the characters have come from his imagination. <laughs> uh, and they're just, he is so much, he's so talented and so much smarter than me. I love seeing it. And um, he's going, becoming more and more integrated with what we're doing. And uh, Travis's son, Jarek, learned how to Photoshop hmm. and was able to assist in making all these cool variations for our heroes and villains cards with all of the you know exciting uh, animations and lighting effects that we've done on them. Yeah, Brad. That's so cool. I, so I wanted to ask about I want this is kind of changing topics a little bit more to like the altcoin discussion. Are you familiar with helium? Because that's one that, that has been coming on our radar a lot lately. And uh, I, I've heard of it, uh, but I don't know anything about it. OK, so basically what what helium is, is you they send you these boxes. You set up these boxes in the corner of a room. They claim to use about five dollars in energy per year. And these boxes cost about $500. And they claim that just by setting up this box and putting it in a corner, you can make about 500 bucks a month it, you know, of this helium coin, which can be converted out. And the idea behind all of these boxes is they're trying, they're, they're basically like nodes for like a Wi-Fi network, essentially. So okay. it's trying to create this sort 5G, of universal right? yeah. 5G. Well, some are Wi-Fi, some uh, are 5G. They're trying to create this like universal network of nodes that are just in individuals' homes. And by just setting up the node, you can earn crypto on them. It looks really interesting to me. It's called Helium. And that's one that we've been kind of paying attention to. But um, I guess my, my follow-up question along that is, are there any altcoins that you're really interested in that you're paying attention to right now that have a, a utility that you're excited about? Uh, well, there's a lot of them. I, I'm afraid to say that I <laughs> probably have too many different coins. Um, you know, So really, the thing to do is to look at uh, coingecko.com you know, for somebody that's wanting to invest in crypto and Check out the ones with the big market caps. I mean, there are now, let me see, I'm going to scroll down here. There are, wow, this is amazing. the top hundred, mm -hmm. okay, of coins are all, they all have a market cap of over a billion dollars now. Jeez, yeah, they do. I'm looking at it too. The total crypto market cap is um, $2.1 trillion. Now, that sounds like a lot, and it is, but that's nothing compared to you know gold for example i think gold is probably what a 50 trillion somewhere in there dollar market probably. the stock market more than that real estate more than that this is still a uh, an emerging asset class and um we're, we're just at the beginning of this but the 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 coins that i pay closest attention to um are the ones that are the rails hmm. for for the chains hmm. right so the exchanges, for example, you know, Binance has their own coin. Mm. Um, KuCoin has their own token. Uniswap has its own token. And these, the FTX has their own token. These are all the exchanges and the services that are the rails for people to be able to buy, sell, trade their crypto. Um, I think those are, those are hot properties. 
uh, DeFi plays, decentralized finance that takes the power away from the centralized big banks that hate crypto because they can't charge their exorbitant fees and because they can't pay the interest rates. Yeah. I mean, I'm earning 10% on my US um, DT, which is my US stable coin mm -hmm. in my Celsius wallet, mm -hmm. just for it sitting there, just 10% for it mm -hmm. sitting there. Jeez. You can't. You can't go to a bank and get 10% on their best CD. No. Not even close. Then you, you have the terms and all these other things in there. Oh, too. yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. Uh, so the banks hate this. And this is why governments also are like, you know, we got to regulate this because uh, the people, you know, are, are endangered and at risk here. No, the people are at risk by sticking with the same old centralized systems that take advantage of them and their money and make people slaves with usury interest rates. Mm -hmm. DeFi is for the people and is most definitely the future. So that's something worth um, researching for sure. Yeah, and those coins, because I'm just kind of looking at these some of these names. I like those rail kind of altcoins that you were saying. Uh, because what, those are the utilities attached to an exchange, so they're necessary in that whole thing. Right, well, right, what happens operation. is if you own their token, you get discounts on um, the exchange fees, mm, right? Okay. So people, and then you can stake those tokens and you can earn more. Um, play to earn is is getting big. Games like Splinterlands and Star Atlas and Axie Infinity are paying people to play. <laughs> like there, there, there's, uh, there, there are groups of people in the Philippines that are making a killing playing you know because they got an axie infinity early yeah 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 wow there the opportunities out there right now for somebody to make money are more multitudinous i think i just made that <laughs> word up, than they than they've ever been in history yeah, that's no, what it know, seems like, man. Yeah. I know Alex Becker. I don't know if you follow him at all or not, but Alex Becker, he makes a lot of YouTube videos lately about crypto gaming and where crypto is going into the gaming world. You know, a lot of what you talked about where you can own items that will cross could potentially cross over games, but also just getting paid to play games. Mm. You know, there's right. a lot of uh, cryptos where the mining is the playing of the game. By playing right. the game, you're mining crypto, you know, so right. there's stuff like that popping up that I think is really, really interesting. Okay. Uh, one question I did have about like altcoins, are there any red flags that you look for? Anything where it like anything that we should watch out for when looking at altcoins and go, okay, if it if it says this or doing this or anything that's a red flag to avoid certain cryptos? Well, I just I would avoid hype. I would avoid anything that promises, you know, ridiculous returns without proof. Right. Um, I would avoid cult like mentality. Uh, it's nothing wrong with being a little tribal, but I think being open, you know, people are always <laughs> this coin or that coin, that soda or this soda, that hamburger or that hamburger, you know, mm -hmm. five guys are in and out. It, it's like, why not both? Yeah. Why not? Uh, you know, I've used PCs and Macs since the beginning. Mm. I own both. I'm on yep. a PC right now. And when I go downstairs and sit on my laptop, I'm on my MacBook mm. and my, I, my iPhone that I'm casually throwing around. <laughs> right. Um, you know, why not, instead of being tribal about it, take the best of what you can from uh, from all worlds? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, no, that reminds me of a, of BitConnect of, what, three or four years ago. When... BitConnect! <laughs> I that. We actually had Carlos, that guy on uh, Bad Crypto here a couple months ago, and he was actually, you know, we thought that we'd be doing this show with this guy, and, and he would be the butt of jokes, perhaps. <laughs> I mean, we weren't going to treat him like that, but turns out the dude is super inspirational is like he? it was it, it, the interview did not go like i thought it would it was really delightful Let's and if you get a out. chance to go back and find carlos matos on bad crypto um there's actually i think we did a video version of him because he's so charismatic we put that one on youtube um really surprising yeah. Well, that's that's what I was going to shout out for you because I've been, you know, ever since I realized, okay, you're deep on NFTs, crypto, all this stuff. I've just been nerding out on bad crypto podcast. Oh, what? You have the Nifty show. I think that's a lot more specific around NFTs. But man, if yeah, if you want to kind of dispel a lot of or dispel a lot of these myths and and see what interesting projects are coming up, watch both of those shows or listen to both. Yeah, we go live every in fact, we've got a show in a few hours today every Thursday at uh, 5 Eastern at nifty.show forward slash YouTube. We go live so, and we have uh, usually three or four guest segments where we bring in projects from across the NFT spectrum and talk about 
you know, either what they've done or what they're getting ready to do mm. and just really trying to educate people on what's up. Thanks for making it uh, easy to understand for us uh, layman, <laughs> but uh, noobs. <laughs> the noobs, but it's not for, we long, just man. love it. It's so yeah. fun. I mean, for it's, sure. I get to play with pixels all day. What? <laughs> It's just, it's just, it's going to open up into so many cool things and, and yeah. everyone's going to be a part of it someday. So might as well start learning now. Get your Absolutely. hands in it if you can. For yeah. sure. So, Joel, anything else that we could shout out of yours that would be helpful for folks? Um, I'd say follow my stuff on my blog, but I haven't blogged in so long. I don't Twitter really though, eat. right? You're on there. Yeah, I do, I do tweet. So at Joel Com on Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, how active are you in your, in your Discord? Discord something I'm still trying to wrap my head around because every time I log into Discord, it's just so much coming at me yeah. so quickly. Uh, but are you pretty active on your Discord? Uh, I am more active on the Discord now. And, and in fact, we have, we've had a Telegram channel for Blockchain Heroes and we've, comp we've migrated to Discord. This is because there's a lot more you can do on the Discord, assigning roles to people, tipping them in hmm. crypto, having channels and threads and Telegram just doesn't allow you to do that. Yeah. Sweet. We'll catch you on there then too. Joel, yeah, man. appreciate you, man. And your time. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks fellas. Time. Yeah. Have a great one. Woo. Yeah, buddy. That was good. That was great. That was, uh, we, we've been waiting for a, a NFT I was gonna say guru, but he called himself a goober. A goober. This, this yeah. was after the uh, the recording stuff. Yeah. But we've we were, been searching for someone to talk about these. We hoped for an time. NFT guru. We got an NFT goober. It's okay. <laughs> Wouldn't trade it for anyone else. No, it was it was an amazing <laughs> conversation. We actually haven't talked about cryptos and NFTs and stuff like that for it's been a while. Three or four years now. That was like, like during the last boom, huh? <laughs> yeah, back when it was booming Bitcoin. before, we kind of came on and we're we're having conversations about it and. Um, yeah, it, it's nice to circle back around because uh -huh. you and I have been going down the rabbit hole. But like, I think we kind of made this sort of conscious decision that we don't want to be like a crypto NFT blockchain like investor kind of podcast. Like mm. that's not really who we want to be. Um, but every once in a while, I think it's it's kind of cool to bring it up and chat with it. And Maybe we should have, though, because he's already got 10 million downloads on his on his crypto podcast. That's pretty cool. In yeah. A very short period of time. It is but true. All I have to say is, yes, I think we made the right decision. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I think when we were doing a lot of episodes about crypto and stuff, we were getting some feedback from people that huh. weren't ready to get into it yet. But, you know, this is one of the rabbit holes that we go down outside of the podcast, mm -hmm. right? Like we don't talk about it a lot on the podcast, but we are messing around with NFTs and crypto and various We're altcoins like and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think uh, and now is even a better time to be at least aware of what's happening in the crypto world. And it doesn't have to just be invest in Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these other ones, which cool mm -hmm. <laughs> that option's still there but it's all these the tech and the, all the the utilities and all the cool stuff that's happening nfts is just kind of like the terminology mm -hmm. that's that's associated with a lot of these things but yeah right now it's art yeah. primarily but like there's so many different ways to use this technology and blockchain smart contracts we didn't get deep into that but it's like man it's gonna it's gonna infiltrate everything yeah and this is the new new internet well i'd us. actually be curious so anybody listening to this um go in our facebook group or in the youtube comments if you're watching this on youtube let us know if you want us to talk with more people about cryptos and nfts and, and stuff like that because it is something we're passionate about we just i think we didn't think maybe our audience would be as interested as we are but now um now that we're sort of <laughs> our interest level of it is going up 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 again maybe it, it, it does make sense to talk yeah. about it a little bit more but but I do want to reiterate something that Joel Com said. Nothing on this episode or anything we talk about is financial advice. That like exactly. we actually are noobs and just figuring this out as we go. So we're exploring. Yeah. yeah. So don't take anything we say as financial advice. Yeah. And I think it's valuable to have conversations like this, even if you are like, I'm not going to touch this stuff for a while. But if you've lasted this far, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, like, I'm pretty sure you got some ideas on how Joel has been approaching tech since. 95 i think yeah. he said i mean like he got acquired by by uh yahoo with his game he actually had an avatar made uh from his face that was part of yahoo's like version of his game which was kind of cool we uh -huh. didn't talk about that but i was like man that could be an nft yeah yeah <laughs> i don't think he owns the rights to that avatar but uh all that to say is like he pivots fast he pivots mm -hmm. fast he launches quickly on a new tech that he finds fun i mean you heard his 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 whole philosophy mm -hmm. that's all he's doing here as well but he's just realized oh the well here is deep yeah and it's it's, been, it's interesting because i feel like we've been that way like i think you and i over the years we've even been on our own heads we've talked about it on therapy sessions mm -hmm. in in the past about how we feel like we've pivoted a lot over the years Ton. but when the way joel explained his pivots i almost feel like okay 
that's a nice, neat little package to say what we've been doing as well, right? Is we get okay. really, really, really into things, and then we just turn around and talk about the things that we're into, whether you know we're sharing it to our email list, writing blog posts, making videos, making podcasts about it, whatever. We we find little things that we're interested in, mm -hmm. and when we start going down the rabbit hole, we're like, others need to know about this, sure. and then we start telling others, and that's why we've pivoted so much is we kind of go like, oh, this is really exciting. Let's explore this, and then two years later, other completely different things are yeah. really exciting to us in the moment. We're the excitable kids, yeah. for sure, and as is Joel, because I think he said he's like the eternal 12-year-old. It's yeah. in his bio, which I'll probably read in the intro, yeah. which you've already heard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I know like when we go to party or at least I'm told this feedback when I go to a parties or like anyone, if I learn something new and I'm excited about it, I'm just going to freaking tell them all about it. Tell them all the cool stuff that you can do about it. And people are always interested or seem like they're interested. Yeah. But I get the feedback. It's like, man, you just want to like teach this stuff. And, and I'm like, I do. Yeah. Because it like that's that's the point of the show. We want life to be interesting and give you some of the cool things we're learning from the coolest people in our network and uh it's it's just really i think we're we're both grateful to even like know people like joel yeah so he's a freaking pioneer he's minted over a million of these nfts yeah and plans for way more and the dude just gave you his philosophy and like why you should be paying attention to this yeah i mean he was one of the first thousand apps in the app store yeah. right <laughs> he <fart>. was <laughs> he was one of the original internet marketers you know mm -hmm. we did an episode recently with armin morin and yep. he was talking about like the early days of internet marketing well joel com was right in there with him you in those Perry days Marshall. Mm -hmm. he's been on a couple times buddy of ours will be back yeah so. and and so like he sees all of these trends really really early and if you look at his track record he has a pretty dang good hit rate. <laughs> Not bad, huh? <laughs> so yeah. I think it's just like he's in the game. You know, you, you make a splash. You're always involved somehow. And uh, you're not afraid to pivot, yeah. You know, like, and and we have been in our heads about that in the past, but I think that's what brings so much knowledge and experience, and we could share more that way, connect with more people, you see more opportunities. Yeah. Well, I was even I even shared an episode with you recently that you listened to for a second time. I listened to it for a second uh -huh. time with Kamal Ravikant, oh, yeah. and he was talking about how he doesn't necessarily invest in companies or products; he invests in the people behind them. Right. So he's like, if I look at a company and I see that they've pivoted four times, that's a good sign to me. That means that like they mm -hmm. sort of iterate fast. They start going down this one path and they realize, okay, that's not the right path. And then they pivot and, oh, that's not the right path either. Yeah. So to him, like a company that has pivoted a lot is not a red flag, a green flag? I don't sure. know. What's the opposite green of a flag. red flag? Green flag sounds good. That's go. Yeah. <laughs> NASCAR at least. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. And, and even when you're bootstrapping, I think that's kind of something else too, which we basically bootstrapped everything. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think like the people factor and the pivot thing, I mean, you're, you're kind of open and, you know, you're flexible about things, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it sounds like a lot of really successful people have done the pivot thing that we've done. And, you know, just like he's been doing this crypto podcast for what is it, four or five years now? Uh, about four, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like he's kind of stuck on that one track for a yeah. while, we've kind of went, ooh, podcasting's the track that really keeps on hitting for us, right? It That's does. the track that, like, you know, no matter what we do, we always come back to a podcast. We did our first in 2010. Mm -hmm. It lasted a little while. We phased it out. We got the draw, did another one, uh, faded it out again. Didn't know we were doing it. We kept time. on getting <laughs> drawn back into podcasting over the last freaking decade over a decade now so it's, it's like we found that vein that we really like but it's also a platform where we can pivot we can talk about crypto one day influence the next day mm. um mental health the next day uh psychedelics the next day like we could pivot Why whenever not? we want <laughs> with a podcast and some of our audience will follow us along from the ride some of us some of the audience will sort of drop off because we're talking about things that no longer interest them but that's our sweet spot is if you listen to this podcast, you're just getting an active representation of the things we're currently into. <laughs> and our network too. Yeah. That's that's a cool thing. So I don't know. All I have to say is this this was a packed episode. So let's let's uh how do we get the notes? Because we have a new uh Yeah, we so page. we do have a new page. If you go to hustle and flowchart.com slash notes, you can opt in for the notes. No more of the join our Facebook yeah. group and then once you're in our Facebook group, you'll get an email it's and too the email will get you the you know? and like no, we're simplifying. If you just go to hustle and flowchart.com slash notes, we'll hook you up with the notes action guide flow notes. We're calling them flow notes now. <laughs> we're still figuring this out, but yes, flow notes. Yes. yes. Mandy Mahoney coined the term flow notes Mandy? and we liked it. Mandy, sorry. Molly Mahoney. <laughs> We were just talking to Mandy McEwen. So, and so, Molly. And Molly. <laughs> In yeah, person. Sorry. Both of them, actually. Sorry, Molly and Mandy. <laughs> Molly Mahoney. 
Yeah. Want me to take this one? Yeah, yeah. You All know right, what I'm trying cool. to say. Yeah, go, yeah. go for it. Molly Mahoney dubbed us as are these as the flow notes. <laughs> um, we've also been dubbed as the. Yeah, put her here. Uh, we've Can't also even high been, five right. No, that was, like, that was like that much of my hand. <laughs> We're not even drunk or high yet. It's like barely noon. Yeah. <laughs> That's soon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can see that fridge over there. It's stacked. No, it's with, not. with burritos. Water. Actually. Burritos and water. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we've been called the Flow Bros as well by uh, Adam Scheibel. Mm -hmm. um, I hopefully <laughs> forgot your name right. Uh, but either way, yeah, Molly Mahoney. Thank you for the Flow Notes term. But go get the notes at hustleandflowchart.com slash notes. Yes. Correct? And yeah, you, okay. it's going to ask you for your email. And if then you we're just going to. see my gonna... face like going like. Yeah, yeah. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. If, if Joe looks silly, you're in the right place. Well, that's kind of everywhere. So. This. Anyway, I, I, another thing that I can't believe about this episode was that his next internet millionaire was 14 years yeah, ago. I know. That it, would have been 2007, which is literally when we started our online business. Jesus. So that the, the timing makes sense, yeah, right? No, 2007 that's, is that's when we started point. going down these rabbit holes. And one of the things we came across while going across these rabbit holes was Joel Com doing next internet millionaire. Interesting. I didn't, yeah, I didn't put that together because like Joel has a Wikipedia. That's pretty mm. sweet. Um, yeah, and it, it explains a lot of that on there. So if you're curious more about like Joel and how, uh, well, at least Wikipedia presents him. Yeah, it links to all these like different projects and books and stuff. The and Next Internet Millionaire well. is still online on his YouTube channel. They're still there. Yeah, well, yeah, it was always an online channel. So why would it go away? Yeah. It, supposedly, it was produced with more budget than Napoleon Dynamite, the movie. That's what I think I read mm. on the, uh, which Napoleon was about like 400,000. So I don't know if that's accurate. Wikipedia said something like that under the the page of that show. So check it out. It's just like, man, Joel does cool shit. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes big, too. And he well, goes quick. So Maybe we should shout out some of the URLs that Do he it. gave. My computer um, died with all the URLs. So, so his his Discord, he said he is getting more active in the Discord. It was badco.in slash Discord. Mm -hmm. So uh, it spells out badcoin slash mm -hmm. Discord, but it's badco.in. Um, was there any other URL specifically that he shouted out? Um, he did and I, there was I can't uh, help B, out. <laughs> there was one called beheroes.com or uh, was it BC? Yeah, bcheroes.com. Yeah. So for blockchain heroes, that's his uh, NFTs. That's his, his NFTs. So if you want to yeah. get involved in his, his NFTs, that's at bcheroes.com. And, and of course, we're gonna link all this stuff in the show notes as well. So make sure to go there at uh, well, <laughs> shoot. Find this episode. It's either at evergreenprofits.com or hustle and flow. We're in the middle of a rebrand, hustle and flow yeah. um, You'll find them. But uh, yeah, we'll link everything there. But a couple of his podcasts go definitely check out Bad Crypto Podcast mm -hmm. and The Nifty Show. Yes. So the Bad Crypto, like he's like interviewing all of these crypto uh, programmers, people just doing the groundbreaking stuff and you're hearing it from them. And then The Nifty Show is more on NFTs. Yeah. Yeah. It's great stuff, cool. man. And it's fun. Because those guys, they like to have fun. Yeah. That's what it's all about. He's a 12-year-old. That's what he's all about, too. Yeah. yeah. So. He's a giant 12-year-old. He is. <laughs> <laughs> with 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 some facial hair. A little bit. A little yeah. bit more than uh, 14 years ago, he said. Yeah. He had a yeah, good yeah. tea back then. All right. So um, <laughs> get the get the flow notes, hustleandflowchart.com slash notes, and uh, Easy Webinar, mm -hmm. our fabulous sponsor. Got to give him a shout out there. Yes, so, sir. They're always producing the best webinars that can possibly pr be produced, or at least like the show. You still have to create the slides. And stuff. Yeah. You still got to make your own webinar, but they'll give you all the tools around the webinar to make it That's live, right. automated, hybrid, streaming. They'll build the landing pages for you. Mm -hmm. They'll do all the tracking for you. Like it, it pretty much, you make the webinar this tool does the rest that's a good way to put it yeah so easywebinar.com slash hustle they are hooking you up with a discount because you're a hustle and flowchart listener so check it out over at easywebinar.com slash hustle there it is <laughs> that's there it. it is and lastly last call to action they're not too many this time go subscribe go like this thing share this episode around if someone's interested in nfts or if you're finding this on youtube uh go go share this puppy around yeah, subscribe. Go subscribe like it yeah i mean Help we're doing your some brothers really, out your flow bros huh? we're doing some really cool stuff on youtube so that's if if, if there was only one thing to, no i don't want to say that because i want you to do all the call to actions go to hustle and flowchart.tv and subscribe to the channel also on top of all the other things we just told you to do thank you yeah and thank you. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Cool.